Have you ever looked at an apple falling from a tree, a lightning strike, or a school of fish swimming in formation and wondered, what make these systems tick? What are the algorithms that live behind the scenes of the world that we live in? And what happens when you emulate the natural world in interactive software animations? My name is Dan Schiffman. Um, I'm a co-founder of the Processing Foundation, and I've been working for many years on tutorials and educational materials and all sorts of things related to creative coding, open source processing, and this new framework that we're gonna use in this course called P5JS. I'm really excited to be here to teach the nature of code. So the goal of this course is simple. It's really one thing. Every example is gonna be one thing. I wanna look at something that, that naturally occurs in the physical world, determine how you can write some code to simulate that thing that's in the natural world. So I'll start with like very basic things, physics. How do you make something move around the screen? Why do things fall with gravity? How does that work? I'll cover a concept known as a vector and how do you program with vectors and build from scratch a simple physics engine that's modeled after Newton's laws of motion. Once we've built that simple physics engine, the next thing to think about is modeling life itself. I mean, this might seem like an impossible goal, but we'll start simply. We'll begin by looking at how you can make elements of an animation have an ability to perceive their own environment. So I can look around and see all the stuff around me in this room. What does it mean for a circle moving around the screen to be able to see other circles on that screen? Let's think about this for a moment. Let's say there's a block on this table and it falls off the table. Maybe a giant gust of wind comes and pushes it off the table. Now let's think about a dolphin swimming through the water. Both of those things are moving, but there's a really key difference. This block it can't decide to jump off the table. A force pushed it off, a force from the environment. The dolphin, however, can decide to leap out of the water. I mean, dolphins are amazing creatures. They, they, they might have dreams and desires. They can feel hunger or fear. And those feelings, those things that the dolphin is thinking about, inform its movements. In this course, I want to examine techniques behind modeling autonomous agents, and this is going to allow you to breathe life into those inanimate objects, those shapes, those circles and squares that are moving around the screen, and allow those shapes to make decisions about their movements according to that understanding of their environment. So while by the end of this course, you're probably not going to program a simulation of the entire universe we live in, I do think this is a place where you can start to explore these ideas. Some old formula you saw in a physics textbook that looked like it was impossible to understand. In this course, I'm gonna look at what does that formula mean and how can you translate it into code. And it's up to you to create your own wild, imaginative worlds only that you can dream of. I'm just gonna hopefully provide you some tools to do that and I just really can't wait to be inspired by the kinds of things that you make.